Where can I find an emotional support Rhoda? She's like a fairy godmother. It's very sweet, thank you. If you're ever having a hard time in the kitchen, just think of me and I'll appear right over your shoulder cheering you on. Nailed it. Hi, my name's Rhoda. I'm the video food director at Bon Appetit and Epicurious. Rhoda rescued it and made it better. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm Penny, I'm a professional chef at the Institute of Culinary Education. You probably know me as a level three chef. Roasted bananas and maple syrup, whipped creme fraiche, and a crumb topping. Lorenzo here, I'm a level two chef. Oh my goodness, that's so nice. I'm Rose, I'm a food scientist. And I'm Emily, I'm only a level one chef. I like to put ketchup on because I'm a monster. And here are all of the answers to all of your questions about French toast. I bet I know what a lot of your questions are gonna be about. Custard ratios. <laughs> Let's spin that wheel. Wow. Boop. Do your worst French toast. All right, let's get this over with. Snap. What is the correct ratio of milk, eggs, and other stuff for the French toast custard? <laughs> the correct ratio? So I just eyeball the amount of milk that I'm gonna put in. Is it two eggs? Is it one egg for every quarter cup of milk? That actually doesn't matter. It's how long you soak it or not soak it. Because I made a boo-boo and soaked it for a few seconds too long. That's what Rose said. 20 seconds on each side. Might be on the wet side. So I hate to tell you this, but I actually never measure this. Rose! The ratio isn't set in stone. It's really a personal preference, and it can be a function of how dry the bread is that you're using and what you want your final outcome to look like and taste like. If you twist my arm and force me up against a wall, I would probably say somewhere in the vicinity of three eggs to maybe about a quarter cup of milk. You know, don't go crazy. If you're using two eggs, use half a cup of milk. If you're using a cup of milk, use four eggs. I use eggs and like a spoon flourish of milk. What I'm looking for is to loosen up the eggs just enough so that they'll soak into the bread and still not loosen them so much that it's not super, super liquidy. If you like it a little bit more soft and gooey, you're gonna add a little more liquid than you're gonna have eggs. As far as the other stuff goes, a pinch, a dash, a glug, that's all personal preference. Nobody does a recipe anymore because it's something that you've been doing since a kid. So it's like my grandmother telling me her pierogi recipe. Some flour, some milk, some eggs. I don't know, figure it out. I think uh, if you're going for a ratio, believe in yourself and then it'll just happen. <laughs> it's not scientifically accurate. Bye bye card. One down. Oh, do you prefer? Soaking or coating French toast? I don't like my French toast super wet in the middle, so I'm kind of a quick dunker, really. <laughs> I'm a dunker. I like to go in between. I don't want to leave it in so long that it gets really, really soft in the center, but a quick dip for me doesn't give you that custardy interior that I really want in my French toast. It's kind of a light, quick soak, but it shouldn't sponge. I prefer soaking. I like my French toast wet. Mm. When you let your bread soak in a custard mixture, it's gonna get really disintegrated and wet. It just sort of made a little hole here. I am definitely a dipper. I want enough custard in there and so it softens the bread and I can taste the egginess to it, but not so much that the interior is super soggy. Yeah, that's uh, no bueno. I've heard the argument for coating, but I've never been more disappointed than when I go to a restaurant and I get French toast and it's just bread on the inside. Like, what's the point? I could have ordered toast with eggs on it. It's okay. Here you go. What's the best temperature to cook the French toast? I don't want to burn the sides, yet have the center still be white. That's a really great point. Um, medium? <laughs> Over medium heat? I know some people like to sear it right away, but then it's gonna be uncooked in the middle. Too low and it's gonna take forever to get there and you're not gonna get that beautiful browning. So you're using a burner with flame. You gotta go a little lower than that. If it's one of those, what we use, which is a non-flame, you can go a little medium. Medium heat is a pretty safe bet for French toast. If you keep cooking at a really high heat, all of the milk solids are gonna burn in your French toast butter and you're gonna end up with some really off flavors and a, and a burnt French toast. If you're a level one cook like me, err on the less hot side because you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Uh, if you're a level three cook, why are you watching this video? Unless you were in it, in which case that makes perfect sense. Hi! So for me, it's a little notch above medium. When in doubt, 
go with medium. You very rarely have a really big problem. You might have a little problem, but you won't have a big problem. Anyway, bye-bye. Okay, next. Can chefs tell me rare and exotic toppings on French toast? <laughs> How dare you? I think ketchup is pretty exotic. Rare and exotic. Really any kind of fruit. Peaches, sometimes I've done peach compote. Guava? You could try passion fruit. What, a star fruit, which is yummy and sweet? Bananas? If you're in Scandinavia, maybe you don't have a lot of bananas. I don't know. I don't know your life. I've had uh, a marshmallow sauce on top of French toast, which was really delicious. I love fried plantains and mashed up and fried again and sugared. Oh my God. But would you put that on a French toast? If you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose you could go savory and add some vegetables or maybe avocados, cayenne pepper. I'm just thinking of things that would be unusual to put on French toast now. Bourbon. You could probably do a variation on chicken and waffles with French toast, so you could add maybe a savory meat. Fish French toast, that sounds weird. Bacon. Rabbit. <laughs> Would be unusual. All right. No, no, I'm keeping going. Seaweed, kimchi. All right, I'm done, okay, I'm done. There's the bell. All right, here we go. Why is it called French toast? I wanna know because it has definitely nothing French. I'm not really sure why it's called French toast. Things in there could be French. Bread is a very French thing. I actually thought it was English because of bread pudding. I don't really know. <laughs> I have no freaking idea. Listen to the next person. Actually, this dish is called pan perdu in France. Which means sinful bread. Which I believe translates to lost bread. The implication is you're lost from God. So it's the idea of using day old bread and serving it in a different form. We're not gonna call it sinful bread. What's it called again? Well, you know, that, that French thing, that French Toast. I knew something Rose didn't know. I didn't teach that in food science. <laughs> All right, is there a way to make Italian toast? <laughs> People are so funny. Use pepperoni. <laughs> What is wrong with you people? Oh, I suppose if you went to Lake Como and it had a beautiful view and you were looking at both the Alps and the lake and you were in Italy, you could call it Italian toast. Put a mustache on, I, I don't know. Drink some vino while you make it. Maybe you could use an Italian bread? I guess a bruschetta maybe? <laughs> Bruschetta? <laughs> I don't know how you say it. Bruschetta? I'm gonna go with bruschetta. Bruschetta, in my mind. You could use Italian bread to make French toast. Ciabatta or a focaccia. If you wanna make it for breakfast, you could use something like panettone. And if you wanna turn it savory, a little dash of oregano, perhaps. Maybe if instead of butter, you used some olive oil. That could be good. So imagine this. It's bread, but it's round. You put sauce on it, you put cheese on it, you put it in an oven, maybe a special oven. You wait a little while, you bring it out. Italian toast. You see what I'm saying there? You see what it's pizza, I'm doing pizza. That's very odd, I'm gonna move on. Dear Emily, is there such a thing as savory French toast? Yes. Like garlic bread French toast. Well, that's a little crazy, that, come on now. If you don't put anything sweet in your custard, you definitely could embrace a more savory flavor profile. You know, you don't see it a lot, but absolutely. I don't know why, it's not a bad idea. It's a vehicle, it can be absolutely anything. You can make a croque madame or a croque mansour. Let's say you had an olive bread, or maybe a bread with bacon baked into it or something like that. But at that point, is it really French toast? I don't really think so. I think it's another category. There's what Emily did in the video. That was her justification for the ketchup, right? Ketchup. Is that in her mind it was like scrambled eggs? Yas. There, that's your Italian French toast. Move on. Is that the same person? I don't <laughs> Goodbye. Mm, I'm hitting it too hard, I think, now. Next to Rooney. This is a really good question. What's the ideal thickness of bread for French toast? It really just depends on what you like. I know in this video I said the perfect thickness for French toast is about three quarters to one inch. It's thick enough that it can absorb a lot of the custard, but not so thin that it's gonna just like fall apart. You slice it in the middle, that way it's nice and fresh. And then I would go about the nub of your thumb. 
but if you want a thicker bread, go for it. Inch, inch and a half, inch and a quarter. Maybe you want to stuff it. You're going to need it to be thicker for that. I try not to use the, the bread that you get that's already sliced, of course. Just regular white pre-sliced bread. Oh, Emily did that. A lot of those pre-sliced breads, they have a lot of chemicals in them that keep them fresh for a very, very long time. These are not things that you necessarily want in your French toast. You want a bread that can stale so that it soaks up more custard so that you have a more delicious French toast. Whatever bread you have will do it though. I have to regress. I said I'd never used the sliced bread from the grocery store like Emily did. That is not true. I have, but I've doubled it up. I kind of glued it together with a butter and sugar mixture and then I did the old soaks. Needs a lighter touch the bell, that's why. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Is it true that it's better to use stale bread? I'm no expert, but I think so. It sure is. It's good to use day old bread, actually. First of all, it's a great way to use things that you have that you would otherwise have to throw out. It's drier, and it's gonna soak up more of the flavoring and the custard that you're dipping it in. If the bread is too moist to begin with, it's not gonna absorb a lot of the liquid from your custard. It's just, it's better, it's better. But you can use any kind of bread that you really want. It depends on how much time you have. I don't always have stale bread, so I've done it with fresh bread, but like I think stale bread's for sure better. That's all. Oh God, as long as the ketchup incident is addressed, we're good. <laughs> you can garnish this with whatever you want. I like to put ketchup on because I'm a monster. I love French toast, I love ketchup, but not together. Leave Emma Lee alone. She is a lovely girl. <laughs> the truth of the matter is I found that disgusting. I'm sorry, Emily. <laughs> Not my personal preference, but Emily, you do you. We'll let Emily deal with this one. I like ketchup on my French toast. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Just maybe don't knock it till you rock it. Ketchup is used in a lot of culinary foods. Just not French dust. <laughs> Listen, if you're coming to my house for brunch, Rose. I don't like ketchup on French toast. I'm not gonna make you that French toast. I know. I do like ketchup and I like Emily. But if I'm alone, it's a rainy day, no one's home. I've got eggs, I've got bread, I've got milk, I've got ketchup. I do it again. I do it every time, baby. And it's good. You all were talking about it, so obviously she did something right. All this attention about the ketchup. I don't like it. Just keep caring about me. I don't care. I want your hate. <laughs> Give it to me. If you have so many questions, why don't you just try it yourself at home and let me know. Yeah, you, this one. Emily, is everything okay at home? Yeah, it's fine, thanks, why? I really need to know who hurt Emily this bad. <laughs> who hurt you this bad? When she pulled out the ketchup, I literally started crying. I'm so sorry to hear that. <laughs> I hope you weren't at work at the time, because that could be embarrassing. Emily slipped back into level zero territory with this one. When she pulled out that ketchup bottle, <laughs> the world went dark. <laughs> Everybody gangster till Emily puts ketchup on her French toast. And I saw the ketchup bottle. My entire life flashed before my eyes. Honestly, same. Emily is completely right. She is a monster. Yeah, I'm the heel of this series. <laughs> they didn't know they needed a villain until I came on. Hi, 911. I'd like to report a crime against French toast. I goobered a little on that one. What is it, being too delicious? For me, French toast is a decadent treat. Delicious for breakfast, brunch, lunch, or dinner. It's what you eat when you're on vacation and feeling relaxed and eating way too much food. It makes me happy, and frankly, in this world, we all need something that makes us a little happier. That's what my dad made when I was a kid. Uh, so that's the way I make it. Experiment with your French toast, have a good time with it, and in the end, you're gonna eat it anyway. <laughs> Enjoy. And that's everything, 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 everything there is to know. Well, almost everything about French toast. <laughs>